Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. Good morning, good morning. I know I'm running a little bit behind, but I'm here. Good morning. This is Lashana Janine Hearn, A Year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Good morning. How is everyone doing? I hope that you are waking up with a praise on your heart and um, giving God his due glory, due praise, due honor. Amen. We have to uh, always push forward, push forward, push forward, no matter what. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we glorify you, and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for waking us up this morning, helping us get out of bed, ordering our steps, and getting us on our way, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for the energy and the strength to be able to look past our circumstances look past our situations, and to be able to just keep pushing forward and keep going. And and we thank you that you are you're holding us by our hand and you're guiding us and directing us, Lord God. And, and we just give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you for your healing, your healing power. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that you reside in us and that you live within us. And we give you all glory and honor and praise. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus Yahweh. In Jesus' holy mighty name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. All right. So if you're just coming on, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Today we are in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, starting with verse 2. And then we'll read 15, and then 16, verses 1 through 14. And then we'll read Acts 11. So y'all ready for this reading? If you're just coming on, if you're new coming on, and you haven't been coming on, the reading of the word is to plant the seeds of the words of God. This is our opportunity of seeking first the kingdom of heaven and uh, developing our relationship with the Lord God Almighty. And we're doing it as individuals, as together, as a family. So I always say what's going on in my spirit when, as I'm reading the word. I'm encouraging you all to do the same. To say what's in your spirit, type it out on the on the in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, type that out in the comments. And so do know that I do read from the King James Version. So if you are reading from a different version, that is okay. Just know that the wordings will be different. See, Second Chronicles 14. All right, we ready? 
2 Chronicles 14, starting with verse 2. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. Also, he took away out of all the cities of Judah, the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah for the land had rest and he had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore, he said unto Judah, let us build cities and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears. Out of Judah, 300,000 and out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows, two hundred and four score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with an host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto Marasha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha at Marasha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah. And the Ethiopians fled. Good morning. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar. And the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance, and returned to Jerusalem. So good morning, good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. <clears throat> we are in Second Chronicles. We just read chapter 14, starting with verse 2. And now we'll read on to... Chapter 15. All right, Second Chronicles 15. <clears throat> and the Spirit of God came upon <clears throat> Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. While ye be with him, and if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest 
and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Macha, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the brook of Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect in all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war until the five and thirteenth year of the reign of Asa. So good morning. If you're just coming on, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in 2 Chronicles, and we just read uh, chapter 14, 15, and for chapter 16, we'll read verses 1 through 14. Amen. All right, 2 Chronicles 16, verses 1 through 14. In this, oh, I almost bit my tongue. In the sixth and thirteenth year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold, 
Go break thy league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ejon and Dan and Abel, Mam, and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Baasha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Baasha was building, and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. And at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from, him, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wrought with the seer and put him in a prison house. For he was in a rage and with him because of this thing, and Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. And behold, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great, yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fourteenth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sceptres, which he had made for himself in the city of David, and laid him in the bed which was filled with sweet odors and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the Apothecary's art, and they made a very great burning for him. Okay, so 16 only have 14 verses. So, of course, we need to discuss this. I don't know if y'all are hearing it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I'm hearing. So verses 7, seven through 14, 2 Chronicles 16, verses 7 through 14. He had an opposition approach him. So we want to learn from this mistake. And we've been repeating this type of history. We've been repeating this. One moment, we'll go to the Lord. We'll, we'll seek the counsel of the Lord. We'll rely on him. He'll come in. He'll do what he does. And then another opposition shows up. And it's like we completely forget to go to him. And, and, and I know a lot of you know this. But it's like, it's even when, like, say, for instance, you have a problem that show up in your life. And instead of going to God first, you call your girlfriend up. Man, I have this problem, da-da-da. So instead of seeking and relying on the Lord, you went to a friend instead. Or just like you said, he got sick. So instead of going to God first, he went to a, a physical doctor. 
And like I'm going through that even right now. Like I'm I'm have I'm battling in my health and I have not gone to a doctor. I, I'm depending and relying on the Lord. We need to learn from this. We need to learn from this mistake. And he even sent a seer to let him know, you just did a foolish thing going to the Syrians instead of relying on the Lord God. So now that peace that was there was taken away. Right now, we are doing the very same thing that Asa did. Even not just concerning our own personal oppositions that we're going through in our life, but even what's going on in the world. What are we doing? We're automatically going to man seeking for them to have a solution instead of going to God. Yes, there's a lot of us going to God and praying, but as a body of Christ, as whole, as an individual, yes, I go to God first. You're going to God first. But as a body, God is looking at the whole body of Christ. That's why this is a worldwide thing. We have to get our brothers and our sisters and everybody seeking the kingdom of heaven first. Relying on the Lord God first. That's why when I pray, I pray that Jesus is the cure. I pray that Jesus is the solution. I pray that Jesus is the answer. Not what comes from man. You know? And that's that's the lesson that that and and Asa he knew he did wrong and he felt bad. And now he's taking it out on other people. You know? You know when you've ever done something wrong and 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 all of a sudden you're angry. So instead of just saying, "Lord, forgive me for what I did." You just hold it in and you just you get angry and you get worse. Let's not do that. If you make a mistake, see we have a high priest now. His name is Jesus. You make a mistake, own up to it, and be like, listen, forgive me. I didn't come to you first. I didn't inquire or or seek your um what you want first. And just ask for forgiveness. And then don't do it again. Amen. But we want to learn from this. Because we're, we're a lot of us are doing this, this very thing right now. This is a right now word. Instead of seeking God first concerning situations and circumstances in our life. Instead of seeking God first when it comes to what's going on in the world. If we was to get sick, we automatically run to the doctor instead of seeking God first. And we need to seek the Lord first. Seek the Lord first and all things will be added unto you. Amen. All right, so good morning if you're just coming on. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We just read, we were in 2 Chronicles 14, 15, and 16. And now we'll read Acts 11 in the New Testament. So again, I encourage y'all to say, Say something, say it in the comments, engage, interact, and say what the Spirit is saying to you. All right, Acts 11 says, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea 
heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Of course, you'll always have those. Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the life, wait, sorry, for as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but only the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Syrian, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. For uh, then departed Barnab Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, 
and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Amen. So if if you if you didn't see the video or if you wasn't a part of the live yesterday, um, Peter Peter was only a disciple who preached to the Jews only, and then he was commissioned by the Lord God to get rid of that division between the Jews. And the Gentiles. And before yesterday, before I read this, I even had, I even saw in the spirit, the Lord is getting ready to bring down the, the division in the body of Christ, the division of races, the races, um, the division of rich, poor, because in the body of Christ, he's wanting us to become one. And I'm specifically saying the body of Christ, people of God. We will no longer be focused on status, status quos, or um, skin color, or culture. The culture divide is getting ready to come down. Uh, status quos, things like that, that divide us in the body of Christ. Those, those walls are getting ready to, because he wants us to be a unit, unity, together as one, one body, one mind. And that's the whole purpose of staying in the word every single day. So we all develop the mind of Christ, not our opinions, not how we see things. That's why in Proverbs it says, lean not to your own understanding. We want to have the mind of Christ and he is, he is molding us and building us to where we are one and we operate as one. And, and, and this would be a, an awesome, great day to see, you know, we no longer looking at race. We no longer looking at skin color. We are no longer looking at status quos. We're not look, no longer looking at who's rich, who's poor, because there's not supposed to be any lack in the body of Christ, period, anyway. We're supposed to reach out to each other, help each other out, be there for each other. And 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 God is is requiring that we get this right. That we get this right. Because it's it's going to come down to the just and the unjust. Believers, non-believers. And we're, we're going to have to come together, throw opinions to the side, and literally hear from the Lord. And so just like in Second Chronicles 16, we're learning that don't seek your advice first. There's nothing wrong with seeking advice from other people, but seek it from God first. From now on in your life, no matter what, if you have a question, if you have a thought, if you have a feeling or an emotion, go to God first. Lean on Him first. If you feel, if you feel something going on in your body, don't get up grab your keys and run to the doctor first, first go to God. 
what is this, Lord? What's going on with me? Like, seek him first, no matter what. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. I just want to read Proverbs again. Proverbs, because, you know, I'm, I'm always going back to this. Always going back. Because it's very, very important that the pot, the body of Christ truly, truly get it. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. That also means opinions. Don't lean to your opinions. Don't lean to the opinions of others. Don't, don't, don't try to come up with your own reasonings. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So, if you go to him first and you need to go to a doctor, he'll let you know. Yes, go to a doctor. Well, which doctor do I go to, Lord? Go to this doctor. Go to this hospital. Like, this is the type of relationship you are doing what you can to develop with the Lord God. Like, you be able to go to him and say, Lord, I'm going to the grocery store. Well, you had a plan to go to Walmart, but something's going on at Walmart that God don't want you to be involved in. So he'll he'll tell you, no, daughter, no, son, go down the street to Aldi's. You know, you want to develop that type of relationship with the Lord God. Okay. So it says in seven, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And in verse 8, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You can stand firm on God's word. And if he says, seek him first in everything, every choice you're getting ready to make, every decision you're getting ready to make, even when, you, even when you're writing your plans down, your vision down, seek him him first 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 don't call your girlfriend up don't call your boyfriend up don't even call your pastor first seek god first and he will direct your path this is this is very very serious and even in in in, ch in chapter 13 second i mean 16 2 Chronicles 16, we, we God shows how serious he is about it when Asa sat there and sought counsel or, or sought someone else to come and help him with a problem. God sent a seer and was like, listen, nope, you made a mistake. You did that wrong. God is very serious about developing this relationship with you and him. He wants you to trust him with everything. Everything. Do not seek counsel from man first. Don't go to nobody first. Go to him first. Lean on him first. And when you do that, and everybody in the body of Christ do that, all these little divisions that have been developed in the body of Christ are going to come down. And you will see such a great unity. It'll be like, whoa, you know? But we all have to obey. We all have to seek him first. We all have to stay in prayer. We all have to stay in the word together. It is very, very vital, very, very important. So I love you all.
Don't forget to share. Don't forget to tag. We want to invite as many as we can to get into the words of God every morning, every day. And, um, and let's do this. Let's grow together and let's do this and, and, and get this right. Amen. All right. So you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning. Get us ready.